You know, one of the things that I enjoy most about what I do is I enjoy hearing why people do what they do. But even more important than why they do what they do, what's really more important is how they got started in the journey that got them to where they are now. Now, I only have so much time and we got to get kicked off. But do you mind taking maybe two or three minutes? Give me the backstory on who is Rikisha. Just give me the backstory, if you would. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me as a guest on the show. We definitely have to be happy entrepreneurs. If not, we'll give up. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, hold for up, that. hold up. Yeah, go, go, keep going, keep going. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Keep, Thank keep going. you for the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We're number one at night. So <laughs> we're here to give you the best information on how to survive this entrepreneurship journey. So how did I get started? I am Rakesha Pittman, and I am turning talents into treasure. Each and every one of us has a talent. And if you identify what that core talent is, you can turn it into a business or an entrepreneurship journey that will make you happy. All right. I have been uh, an entrepreneur for the past 10 years. I cannot wait to share some of that journey with you and tell you about my own personal January 1st. I am the proud midwife of over 500 authors worldwide. I have been a serial entrepreneur of sorts. I'm pretty fearless when it comes to trying new things. And even in the times that I failed, which most of us do at some point in our entrepreneurship journey, you learn from that, you spin that into a success for you to go to the next level. So uh, tonight we want to show you how to go east, which is going to be amazing going into the next decade. For those of you who are either already in the entrepreneurship journey or you want to uh, revolutionize your journey or you want to evolve and you're not quite satisfied about where you are, you'll go east with me. So I'm excited. I love teaching people how to get into entrepreneurship. I love pulling books out of people, ideas. I love strategy. And it's not just so much that I love it, but it works and it makes you money. Can we talk about that? <laughs> it works and it makes you money. Someone say yeah. ching, ching. Someone say ching, ching. Look, we're behind the scenes. Ching. We're just getting started. Ching, 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 ching. What's up, Monica Beasley? Thanks for joining. What's up, Nicole Brown Hurston? Cheryl Diane, it is always a pleasure. Every single one of you who are joining on, I'm getting the signal. What's up, Yvette Young? They're giving me the signal. I got to get going. I got to get going. When we come back. We're going to rock it in five, four, Three, two, one. Here we go. Go ahead and give a big standing check ovation check, 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 for check. the one and the only Shay Brown. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up and it knows it must outrun the fastest lion or be killed and eaten. Also, every morning in Africa, a lion wakes up and knows it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it will starve to death. You've heard it before. It doesn't matter whether you're a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be what? You better be running. That's right. That's right. You better be running. Life is about meaning, and meaning is about service. Isn't that the reason why we're all here? Isn't that what we're all searching for? 2013, the Peak Performance Institute was created. 5,000 clients who we've helped turn their idea into a reality, their reality into a business, their business into a movement, impacting 5.7 million lives around the world. Imagine that. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Network, the world's largest organization for the well-being of an entrepreneur. And as we always say, our mission at the Happy Entrepreneur Network, our mission is to inspire, empower, and provide resources for the entrepreneur to live a balanced life and execute their vision for the people they were called to serve. And our mantra, you know, I love our belief. Everyone should have a belief statement. Our belief is the results that show up in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. With that being said, let's get started. 
Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome to the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country, The Happy Entrepreneur Show, where our mission is to inspire, it is to empower, and it is to provide the resources necessary so you, the busy entrepreneur, can really execute the vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And isn't that what Rakesha is here all about today? Isn't that what she's going to do? Really give you more resources. So Rakesha, hello, what's going on? Hey, this is a great day to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> it's a great day to be alive and well. I want to say hello out there to June Klein. What's up, June? I see you, Minister Alfreda. Thanks for joining. Tommy Jones, my man, I got your text before we got started. Thanks a lot, Yvette Young, Nicole Bert Hurston, Cheryl Diane. Everyone who's there, look, we're going to kick off because there's a very important question that I want to talk about. And I want to make sure that maybe if you're OK with it, Rikisha, I'm going to digress for just a moment. And I like to slow down and then we're going to speed up. We'll go to warp speed. But the question I have in my mind is there's this concept out here called today is my January 1st. And it's one of our core values here at the Happy Entrepreneur Show. And today, my January 1st represents that pivotal moment in your life where you had to make a change, you recognize that that change based on that decision would make a whole difference in your life. It's that pivotal moment where maybe you were feeling depressed and you decide you wanna go to the gym. And you can either go to the gym or you can what? Stay home. And when you make the decision to go to the gym, you get started. When you make the decision you're gonna get your business going, you get started. So today, January 1, that's the moment that represents when you make a decision to get started it's a pivotal moment so do you mind here's the question directly and for those folks that are listening here's the question directly what was that pivotal moment what was your january 1st that led you to say i'm going to be an entrepreneur and i'm going to make it no matter what absolutely 10 years ago in 2009 i had found myself in corporate america and while i'm not anti-corporate america at all I found that I was often frustrated because I was talented and the companies knew I was talented, but my talents were not rewarded or compensated the, the way that they should have been, you know? So I made sure that I was on time to work. I did not want to get dinged for being late. I got my work done often. I got it done early, right? So this is what did it. This was my January 1st. So I worked for a major casino in Las Vegas in human resources. And I thought that I was doing great on my job. And one day I got pulled into the office and I was reprimanded for leaving work on time every day. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I, I'd never really gotten in trouble at work before. So to be reprimanded, they said, we noticed that you leave work on time every day. And for all the stellar work that I had done, the letters that I received from executives and employees, the only thing that they could do was to try to kind of get me for leaving work on time. Well, here's a little secret that I didn't tell them. I left work on time every day because I had side hustles. <laughs> I was still an entrepreneur at heart. So I left work on time to go work on my business that started at a certain time. And at that moment, I decided that I was no longer going to be a side hustler. I was going to be a main hustler and go feet first into the entrepreneurship journey, not leaning on the comfort of that corporate bi-weekly 26 times a year paycheck. And so I strategically made my escape plan and I wrote my resignation letter. I happily submitted it and my January 1st started and 10 years now, I have not looked back and January 1st never gets old now. And that was the decision that I made to be free. To be free. I love that. Everyone do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor, look right below the video right now. What's up, Helen? Look right below the video, Alyssa. Look right below the video, Jean. Look right below the video, June. And write these words. Today is my January 1st. I get a new start. Today is my January 1st. I'm making a change. Today is my January 1st. I'm going to start my business. Let's put today is my January 1st. 
I'm going to go to the gym. Come on, someone holler at your boy. Today is my January 1st. When you see someone write those words right below the video, when you see them put that down, that today is my January 1st, then that I want you to hit the heart button. I want you to hit the like button. I want you to encourage them and say, yes, you can do this. Now, as they're writing, today is my January 1st. That's the decoration we're going to make. Yeah, we're going to build that relationship. We're going to change our finances. We're going to change our health. Yeah, we're going to make a difference in the world. Today is my January 1st. As you're writing that right below, here's the question I have for you, if, if you don't mind. And that is, what were the steps that you took to get started on this entrepreneur journey that's kept you on track? So take a moment and step back and say, hey, Shay, here's what I did to get started. You know, I'm a writer by trade, but you don't have to be an excellent writer to write your vision down, number one. I think that some of us overthink it. We think that everything has to be perfect before you take that step. It does not. You will make mistakes. You will fail. But the first thing that you need to do is make it real, right? So I say, if it's in my head, it's in heaven, and I need to bring it down to earth. So, so take it from the heaven, right, and bring it to earth. Write it down clearly what you see if you have any names for your business if you have any ideas for your business write down your opening date or your launch date because if not you'll keep moving that finish line or that start line over and over again and you'll give yourself an excuse so make it real by writing it down and then when you know that you have a clear vision then you can start to seek the help that you need maybe to get a plan together to see what it's going to take financially to see what it's going to take um, in terms of your time but I'm writing down ideas all the time and at least if you write it down you will know what you need to do to make today your January 1st and take that first step and definitely Talk to other successful entrepreneurs who will encourage you along that journey. I love it. You know, I always learn something. I always learn something. Look, I have a next question is what should the audience do right now for them to take action? What would you recommend they do? Before you do that, I want to acknowledge Gina Fleming says this is awesome, by the way. Helen Singleton is watching. Alyssa says this today is my January 1st. Nicole Brown Herson says today is my January 1st. What's up, Deborah? Rhonda Page is watching. Matthew, hey, Matt's out there. Thanks a lot, Matthew Pittman. He says, today is my January 1st. Gene Clever says, today is my January 1st. Lisa, I see you, Lisa Ann Johnson says, today is my January 1st. Happy New Year! Isn't that kind of funny? <laughs> We get to say Happy New Year to each other. This is great. We're just getting going. Debbie Malone said, today is my January 1st. You know what? As you're out to Geneva, today is your January 1st. Every single one of you out there, want you to know that today is your January 1st. Look, what would you recommend to an entrepreneur today? What steps should they take to get started so they can be on this journey to be an entrepreneur? I know we're going to get into some cool stuff in a moment, but I just want them to say, you know what? Today is my January 1st. What steps should they take right now to get going? There's so many there's so many different things that you can do. But what I'm encouraging you to do is to do what you know works for you. For me, books helped me. I am an avid reader. You may be someone who likes to listen to audio books. Find a book that is going to help you get started. You may not have all the resources. Maybe you do not have a business degree, but find a book. Right. So at least find that a book, a podcast, something. Take action. Start to feed yourself for the journey. You're going to need the language of business for the journey. That is one thing that helped me tremendously, right? And then the second thing that I would do is start to align yourself with people who are successful in business. You might not find a mentor or write off, but at least go to networking events. I network every single day. It might be virtually, but I'm networking every single day. So go find where people are who are doing what you would like to do and maybe absorb, be a student you know but network make yourself known and and ask you know if, if you don't ask you might not have it so start to ask the right questions get the right information and start to meet the right people ah i love it i love it i love it look everyone right now you're watching the happy entrepreneur show we're going to get down to how do you turn your 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 ideas into money we're going to talk about how do you turn your treasure into dollars we're going to talk about how do you get going and really be a true entrepreneur but you're here with none other than the one and the only the lovely all the way from uh Houston. Dallas. Dallas. Oh, my goodness. I was doing 
doing the best I could. All the way from Dallas, Texas right now. And she came to give you the best that she had. Let me tell you, when we come back, I'm going to ask about this East formula. I'm going to ask her to break down exactly what we need to do in order for us to grow our business. For everyone out there right now, for everyone out there like Christy, I see you, Christy Gray. She's taking some fabulous notes. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Hit the share button. Hit the share button. Pay this message forward. Hit the share button right now and write these words. Today is my January 1st. I'm ready to go. Put today is my January 1st. Hashtag, it's my time. What's up, Belinda Hopkins? Today is my January 1st. It's my what? It's my time. When we come back, we're going to ask her to break it down, and we're really going to figure this East formula out so how we can make more money and also have more meaning. We'll be back in just a moment. Let me ask you a question. Are you ready to take your businesses, your life, and everything that you have to an entirely different level? Yes or yes? Yes, yes. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you ready right now to change the legacy of your last name? Yes or yes? Yes, yes. Put your mask on, it's protection. You're unprotected right now. At the beginning, I had no one to help me. I decided I was gonna become the woman that I needed the most. She got pregnant at 17, had her son at 18 years old, and now she just, her business just hit six figures, six. Who did that help just to give you some confidence, a little? In what I know, than what I do. D plus D equals D. See, a decision plus discipline equals to me. Your decision to be here today does not equal your success. Because you got in business really for two reasons, two reasons only. One of the main reasons you got in business is what? To make what? And that's one reason, that's one reason. And you knew that you wanted all eyes on you while you were out there making a difference, changing lives, and making a dollar at the same time. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome back to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue focus, less right, late night show in the country where our mission is to inspire, it is to empower, and is to give you the resources necessary so you, the busy entrepreneur that gets up every single day, you have all the resources to support the vision for the people you were called to serve. And isn't that what it's all about at the end of the day? Serving other people. We're here with the one and only, the woman herself, Rakesha Williams, on the other side with a big smile on her face. She came to change some lives. Look, I'm going to dive right into it. And she keeps talking about this East formula. East and, right. and I'm going to ask her first, what in the LL Cool J is <laughs> the East formula? So start off if you can and define what is the East formula. And then we'll break it down from there. There is a key formula that I observe not only for myself, but other mega successful entrepreneurs. And it is the East formula. And what is that? Say, go East, go East, entrepreneur, author, speaker, trainer. If you follow that four step model, you should be able to create serial success for yourself year after year after year. So it's not just a business. It's not just a book. Some people make that mistake of thinking all the money's going to come from a book. It's not just that. It's not just speaking. It's not just training. It's all four. So I go East as an entrepreneur, author, speaker, trainer, all four in one. And if you keep that cycle going, the cycle of money will also flow for you. All right, so, so break it down then. You gave us the what. Break down the next step. So the person is listening right now, and they're taking notes. What's the first note that they should take, and what's the first step they should take? 
Yes. Number one, solidify yourself as an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs take risks. We like to establish businesses, but you must do what makes you money. I think that it's a fallacy just to believe, follow your passion and the profits will follow. No, you need to have some solid business practices and principles in place because frankly, some of our passions, just there's no profit there. And I hate to say that. One of my most amazing mentors told me something that rocked my mind. And what he said was, he said, Rikisha, let your profits fund your passions. It messed me up because I believe what everybody said about your passion. So I'm trying to discover what I'm passionate about and I'm trying to find my purpose. He said, let your profits fund your passions. So I stopped taking my money funding my passions and started to take my profits. So that means that you have to establish a business that is profitable. And if you are simply emerging right now, you might not hit the bullseye on the first run, but I dare you not to give up. I dare you to keep going. I dare you to keep playing with the formula until it works for you. So one, you need to establish what is your business? What service do you provide? What goods do you provide? I say do it all. OK, because that's part of the East formula. We do goods and services, but establish very clearly what business that you are in. And once you get the E together, you can move to the A of East, which is. We don't go there yet. Don't go there yet. We're going to tell about the A. Tell them one more time. What is the E? One more time. Everybody write down the E. What is what is the E? E is entrepreneur. E is entrepreneur. Do me a favor. Look right below the video. Look right below the video. I want you to write these words. Let your profits Fund your passion. Hashtag Rakesha Williams. Just look right below the video. Look right below the video. And I want you to write these words. This is so important. And this might be your January 1st moment. That's the moment that's pivotal for you. Where there's a change in your belief. It is disruptive. And you make a decision that alters your life forever. Write these words right below. What's up, Mario Reynolds? Write these words below. Let your profits fund your passion. Let your profits fund your passion hashtag Rakesha Williams. Do me a favor, hit the share button. Don't hold this to yourself, hit the share button. Just, no, seriously, hit the share button. And when you hit the share button, just write these words. Let your profits fund your passion. I'm just thinking about that for a moment. Just let that sink in. Okay, you gave us the E, which was entrepreneur. We're going over the East formula. Yes. So give us the A. We have the E, connect the entrepreneur to the A. Take it away. Yes. So A is for author. And I want to encourage you to be strategic about your authorship. Once you establish a business, a book is an amazing way to leverage yourself, not only as a speaker, which we'll talk about in a minute, but as an amazing, great lead magnet, an educational piece to uh, make sure that your potential clients know about you and also just to reach people, right? So a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that you need to lead with your, with your life story. You might not. And here's something that I want to encourage you with. The first book I published was not the first book that I wrote. And some people are stuck in terms of releasing their book because they think that they started a project and they need to finish that project before you go on to the next idea that you have. Well, let me release you tonight because here we're here to give you freedom and we're here to make sure that as you go into the next decade, you're a happy entrepreneur. Hey, happy entrepreneur I like show. That. Happy right? entrepreneur right? in the house. <laughs> Some of your writing may have been a rehearsal. Release yourself from your rehearsal. And let's go ahead and take the main stage. So define and develop a book that complements your E, your entrepreneur, so that you can go to the authorship. De develop a book that is going to complement your business, promote your business, educate about your business, increase your business. And guess what happens? When I release books, it opens up media opportunities. So that may happen for you. It opens up speaking opportunities. That, that may happen for you. But when you're very clear about your business, it's easy to break down a system. If you have a particular system, I have the East formula. So of course, I have a book that's coming that's called the East formula. So if there is something that you've been teaching or that you've been modeling uh, for a number of years, why not put it into a book and allow that to help build your business? So A is for author. You know, A is for author. I see folks that are out there right now that are writing. I see um, Debbie put down 
Let your profits fund your passion. Levon Hawkins, Lavonda Hawkins is watching. Thanks so a lot. Gina put, let your profits fund your passion. That was powerful. Cheryl Diane put, let your profits fund your passion. How true is that? Dee Bolden, what's up in the house? Said, let your profits fund your passion. Linda Butler said, let your profits fund your passion. Lish, Lisa Ann Johnson said, let your passion fund, I mean, let your profits fund fund your passion how powerful is that we'll break it down to each formula okay and you just talked about being an author and, and i know you help folks every day in this area do you mind sharing okay here's really the question right and it's got to be on someone's mind it's like how, okay what are what are some things that i should look for if i don't work with you although i suggest everybody work for you but suppose you're not the right fit for somebody so what should they look for in any author that's going to be helping them write the book because someone like myself i'm not a writer but i've got to go to someone and i need someone to help me make subject verbs agree and make sure the storyline is good so here's the question what would you say to the person out there that says i want to author tell me what i need to do to get started this is my january 1st moment right so what do they need to get started and what type of author should they look for Yes. Number one, start with an outline. However, we're going to get this done. I have a secret I'll share with you in a second. Start with an outline. Just what is the general, what are the general steps that you want to discuss? And then when you do that outline, it doesn't have to be collegiate. You don't have to be super deep. Okay. You don't have to be the best writer out there, but start with a general skeleton of what you want to share in your book. And how many chapters do you want it to be? Is, is seven a significant number for you? Is eight, is 12? It can be steps, you know, it can be 10, whatever. But determine in advance how many chapters you want this to be if it's going to be a chapter book. Put your general theme for each chapter. And then under that, give yourself some bullet points about things that you want to make sure that you cover that you do not miss. I call it a GPS or a good publishing system. Once you have that, and you can get with people who can help you outline, okay, if you're not great at that, that's okay. But once you have that outline in place, you can get moving, whether you write it, this is what I say, all right? It's not that you need a bunch of time, you need focused time. You don't need a lot of time, you need focused time. I wrote my first book three paragraphs at a time. I write many books 15 minutes per day. And I tell you, if you do not have 15 minutes per day that is available for you to work on your book, you need to fire something immediately and get this book done. It won't be all year long, but focus, get the work done. When I was in college, I pulled all nighters for a paper that one or maybe two people would read and nobody read again. But if you write a book, you can reach the masses, you can reach people and open up doors that will blow your mind. So start with an outline. And then from that outline, set aside 15 minutes a day to work on your book. And you will see that book emerge before you know it. And if you can't write well, gather a team around yourself. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's what they say. <laughs> and it keeps us happy. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm always learning something new and exciting. You know, you've helped over 500 authors worldwide publish, um, you call it bookstore quality books. Um, yeah. Take a moment if you can. I know this wasn't part of what we're going to talk about, but I, I just can't let that go. Um, you got folks out there that are taking notes. Every single one of you are making comments. We appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. We love you. Don't worry. We're going to break down the East formula. We got the E, which is entrepreneur. We're talking about the A, which is author. And I got stuck on author, so don't worry. In a minute, I'm going to have her move on to the S and the T. This is the East formula. But she talks about having a, a book store quality books. She's helped over 500 authors publish them. So I'm just curious, does anyone even go to the bookstore anymore? <laughs> uh, but the real question is, what is, a book what is a book quality book and what's a bookstore quality book and what's the significance of it? Because, I mean, I listen to Audible, but I want to get your input. Exactly. Sorry, but that's a question I have. So if we're going to do this, let's do this the right, W-R-I-T-E way, right? Ooh, yes. So when I say a bookstore quality book, I mean a book that can stand on the shelf or sit on the shelf right alongside mainstream published books and you cannot tell the difference. 
Unfortunately, there are a lot of us taking the cheap route. And I'm not saying you have to spend thousands of dollars, so don't get me wrong. But we're taking the cheap route. And cheap is I didn't research what I needed. I, 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 you know, I went to somebody who didn't know what they were doing. And so I just printed out paperwork, but it wasn't necessarily a book that follows the prescription or the professional standard of publishing. So is your book cover bookstore level? If you go to the bookstore, you will see trends, but your graphics, your font, the placement of the elements on your cover, they need to be industry standard and in the right places. There is a right place to put that barcode, ladies and gentlemen. We don't do bootleggery here, okay? And then so when you open the book, the layout or the formatting of that book needs to be professional. And dare I say, I shouldn't see a lot of typos in your book. We have spell check, we have Grammarly, we have editors, we have people who can um, format and make sure that they're proofreading your work. So let us make sure that we are following the prescription for publishing so that we're not embarrassed. And when the right person picks up our book, they will wonder who published us and not immediately tell that you published it or you did it yourself. Woo! Did it yourself. I love it. Letitia Campbell, what's going up? She said so true. She's in the house this evening. She's watching all this morning, this afternoon. No matter where you are, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about turning your talents into treasure. We're going to talk about the East Formula for the Entrepreneur. You're here with the one and only all the way from Dallas, Texas. None other than Rakesha Williams. And she's a rock star. She's brilliant. She's bright. She's beautiful. And she's bold. And so she's here today to help you do one thing. And that's for you to have the resources so you can really get that, well, that success you're looking for. The East formula is now decoded i can't wait i can't wait when we come back we're gonna break down the s and the t she gave us the e for entrepreneurship she gave us the a for authorship now we're gonna find out that s and that t when we come back we're gonna talk about that you don't want to miss it. for those folks that are out there make sure you get the notes if you haven't text the word revenue text the word revenue right now make sure you get the notes text the word revenue to 202-999-3515 it's right below text the word revenue to 202-999-3515 We'll be back in just a moment. Rikisha, I can't wait. ST, all right. <laughs> it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the founder of the Happy Entrepreneur Network and the host of the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country, the Happy Entrepreneur Show. And I'm super excited. I'm over the moon, just enjoyed to be able to share this special VIP invitation for you to join me at the closeconference.com. Just look right below the video, look right below the video and go to closeconference.com, an opportunity for you to attend virtually or in person. Now, who is this for? If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a speaker, if you're a coach, if you're a network marketer, if you're in the personal professional development, or you're just someone right now that is overwhelmed and overworked and you need to generate some qualified leads of people who want to work with you, whether they come from online leads or offline leads, then you need to be there. Or maybe you're someone that wants to, you know, you say, well, Shay, right now I have what's called yo-yo entrepreneur type of revenue, right? I have reasons, but no results. So it's time for you really to put together your own seven figure revenue generating infrastructure so you can make more money without your labor you can take back your time and you can take back your life then you want to be there or maybe you just want to be able to broadcast just like i'm doing right now i'm at broadcastpreneur studios right here in this set right now and you need to reach your audience online through the power of those fiber optic lines then you need to be at what the closedconference.com or maybe it's just time for you to get all the resources you need in your business so you can serve the people you were called to serve and have more meaning in the world, have more impact in the world, and make a dollar and a difference at the same time. If that's you, look right below the video, look right below the video, and go to close conference.com. I promise you, you'll learn about how to generate unlimited sponsorships. You'll learn about how to tell your story and have more impact. And more importantly, more importantly, you're going to have more success 
more joy and more happiness in your business. I'm so excited. Look, join me at closedconference.com. Share this with all your friends. I'm looking forward to seeing you. My promise to you is it'll be a good use of your time. My promise to you is that you're going to generate more revenue than you've ever generated before in your life and have more happiness. With that being said, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. And I wish you success. See you soon. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and welcome back to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one, that's why I did say the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where our mission is to help busy entrepreneurs like you have the resources necessary in order to execute the vision for the people you were called to serve. And this is the place to be. This is where we inspire and we empower. And we're here with the one and only, none other than Rakesha Williams. And she's doing the East Formula Decoded. That's right, it's being decoded. She started with the E, then she gave us the A, and now break down the S. We are all waiting to hear about that S. You gotta tell us what the S stands for and what it represents. Speaking of this, first of all, I want to say shout out to Dakeisha Williams, because these these Ishas, I know how it is. I'm Dakeisha Pittman, <laughs> but I know that you just saw Dakeisha Williams. So, hey, girl, I know that we need to connect. Yes. So let's go. Let's go East. E, entrepreneur, A, author. S is for speaker. Speaker. If you are an entrepreneur, you need to be able to talk about your business. If you are an author, you need to be able to speak about your book. No one else is going to market you like you. So let's develop that. You're a speaker. There are people out there who want to hear your voice, who want to listen to what you have to say, and don't worry about who else has the message. You need to speak. Speak with conviction. Speak with passion. Speak with boldness. Speak your truth. Tell your story. There are platforms waiting for you. There are many ways to speak. If you're ever in a room with me, I always do a pop quiz and I ask you how many of you have gone live in the last seven days and I rarely get half the room that says that. Social media is a speaking platform for you. It is a way for you to reach people and to hone your speaking skills. How are you going to get better if you never get any feedback about your subject matter and what you're saying? You can speak. You can speak from stages. You can speak in front of rooms. You can speak at virtual events. You can speak on panels, right? You can speak as an MC. There are so many different ways for you to get your message out there. And whether they give you three minutes or whether you have 30 minutes or three hours, there is a message and a story that I know you have that there, your nearest microphone, whether it's a computer microphone or a handheld microphone, is ready and waiting for you to say something that is going to transform and change someone's life. So today I told you, let your profits fund your passions. Wasn't that such a paradigm shift? But if you did not hear that, would you act on it? There are some things that are not going to happen until you open your mouth and you speak up. So S is for speaker. You do need signature talks. You do need to define your audience. But before you do all that, you know, can we get, can we shake off some of this trepidation we feel about speaking and know that your voice matters and your voice needs to be heard? You know, so important. What was the January 1st moment for you? That pivotal moment where you decided you were going to be a speaker and you took the steps to do it. Uh, give us the narrative, if you would, behind that. And that's so important. So what was it for you? I had a passion for the arts many years ago. I say 2003 or so. I had such a passion for the arts to be represented with excellence that I wrote down, like I told you all before in the E, I wrote down this vision for a conference. It didn't happen until three years after I had written it down. But because my vision was clear when it was time to do this conference, it, it flowed so smoothly. So basically, I gave myself my first keynote <laughs> engagement, and that was my January 1st. It was such a high. It was such a love. And I have been doing it publicly, professionally ever since. Yeah, and, and I know this is an old age question, but it's so important about January 1st because they got to get going. What do you say to the person that says they're fearful? Like, you know, they don't want to look bad. Um, they want to make sure, like myself, I was a stutter and I still do stutter. And it's like, oh, my gosh. Um, so I guess the question really is, 
what do you say to the person that just is a little fearful? They want to do it, but they're a little fearful. Um, what would you say they need to do with some steps they can take in order to get started? That's what January 1st movement is all about, getting started. The worst voice that you can listen to is the voice in your own head. I think we're more critical of ourselves than others actually are. But let me say this. Even if you have the perfect speech and diction and grammar, someone is going to take an issue with it. So shake it off. I make mistakes and I, I think that I'm pretty good with words, but I make mistakes and I've learned to kind of laugh at it. You know, I've learned to be funny. You know, I've learned that whatever it is that you do and you do authentically incorporate, uh, incorporate that in your speaking, see, incorporate that in your speaking and don't be so hard on yourself. Don't waste your words. I want to make sure that when I say something that my words count, but at the same time, you know, give yourself a break, make your opinion heard, speak up. Yeah, I love it. That's really good advice. I'm, I was taking some notes myself. I always learn. This, you're, you're, just like, you're just like a rock star. And ladies and gentlemen, you're with Rakesha. Did I say Rakesha? Rakesha Williams. <laughs> Pittman. I keep saying Williams. That's right, Pittman. Yeah, I'm like, I, this, that's Rakesha. I get it. I know. I keep saying it. I'm sorry. Rakesha Pittman. I kept getting yes. it. Rakesha Pittman. 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 I got it, ladies and gentlemen. See, I'm not perfect. But I'm getting better every day, by the way. And I just made a mistake. And I feel so embarrassed. But I'm going to keep on going. Let me ask the question, if, if I can, who was a mentor for you as it relates to speaking? What was a lesson you learned from your mentor that you can share with us so that we can get started and get over the fear of doing what I just did, which is say the incorrect last name. But no, life still goes on, everyone. She's still smiling. She's still here and she's rocking and rolling. Rakesha Pittman. I got yes. It. And, you know, I'm a church chick. <laughs> I, I had so many transformational experiences sitting in church and hearing speakers, but there, I, I must give homage to one person in particular. There was this fiery woman that I met by the name of Dr. Yolanda Lewis. Dr. Lewis had such bold authority. When she spoke, she commanded a room to the point where she forced me to sit on the edge of my seat and watch her. I had never seen someone transform a room and I was hanging on every single word that she said and I admired her and I looked up to her and I wanted to be somebody who could speak in such a way that it would keep people on the edge of their seat. So shout out to Dr. Yolanda Lewis for allowing just her presence to transform me and I did get to know her and I did get to invite her to speak at engagements for me but just the sheer power and the sheer um, skill that she had to transform a room completely transformed my life and my desire to be a speaker wow that is so powerful I'm inspired just hearing every one of you out there I want you to do me a favor look right below the video and just write it's my time. Just look right below the video right now and just put, it's my time. It's my time to get to speaking. It's my time to step into my passion. It's my time to let my profits fund my passion. I love that. I love that. I love that. Do me a favor. Look right below the video because we're all going where? East. We're all going where? East. We're all going where? East. Kendra Wright told me a couple times, go East, Shay. Go East. Go East. Well, it's time to go East. East stands for what again? Entrepreneur. The A stands for what? Author. And the S stands for who? Speaker. That's right. It's your, we haven't given you the T yet. It's your time to go east. Look right below the video. Look right below the video and just put, it's my time. This is all about you. But, but as you're talking about you, um, one of our, our, my favorite segments that I love to do on the show is really, Rakesha, is really talk through the Champions Creed. Because there's a group of folks out there where we're saying, it's my time. It's my time. And I got the shirt on, never lose, right? I'm determined. It's my time. That is so true. But let's take a moment and let's do something called the giver's economy. Let's acknowledge someone else. Let's give someone else a high five. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a segment called the Champions Creed. Now, for all my regular viewers, you know what's about to happen. For all of my new folks that are watching for the very first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Love to have you. The Champions Creed is all about us acknowledging a fellow speaker, a fellow author, a fellow coach, someone out there right now that's doing it. How do we do that? I'm going to put the words up by my mentor in just a moment, and I'm going to read those words. It's called Champion's Creed. And then you, how you participate, you look right below the video, and you write, you are a champion. 
You're going to write, you are a champion. Hashtag never give up. You're going to write, you are a champion right below. What's up, Amber Woods? You're going to write, you are a champion. Now, why are you writing, you are a champion? Because you're acknowledging someone else is running this race. and You're giving a high five and saying you're a champion. You're acknowledging another entrepreneur that got out there in this brave world and said you are a champion. So let me put up Champions Creed. And every one of you look right below the video and write, and write the words you are a champion. Hashtag never give up. So let me go ahead and read the Champions Creed. Let me go and read the Champions Creed. Here we go. The Happy Entrepreneur's Champions Creed. I am not judged by the number of times I fail. But by the number of times I succeed and the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep trying and keep trying yeah. and keep trying. That is so, so important. And so what I like to do, Rakesha Pittman, I got it right. Rakesha Pittman, what I got it right. What I like to do is I like for you to take a moment, if you would, and I'd like you to read those words. And I would like for you to share a time where things didn't go right for you. They're probably watching saying, she got the East formula. She got it all together. She has the best mentors in the world. Maybe take a time that it didn't work out for you. Mm -hmm. And what was the lesson that you learned that you can share with us? Do you mind being vulnerable? Do you mind doing that? Not at all. Okay, and as you're doing that out there, I see that Kendra Wright put, you are a champion. Gina put, you are a champion. Jim and I put, you are a champion. Debbie Malone said, it's my time. Let's go east. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. This is your moment. This is your time. Cheryl Diane said, you are a champion. Linda Butler said, you are a champion. Every one of your champions. Okay, let me put this up there. I love doing this because it's about giving back to someone else. I just love this. Okay, let me. I, let me, I got to go. They said, Shay, keep going. All right, there you go. Take it away. The Champion's Creed. The Champion's Creed says, I am not judged by the number of times I fail but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep trying. And keep trying, and keep trying. You gotta put the Puff Daddy remix on that thing, aren't you? You're from Dallas, aren't you? And keep trying, and keep trying, and keep trying. All right, give us an example of a time where you had to use the Champion's Creed, time you had a setback. What was the lesson you learned that we, the audience, can walk away with? Because you are champion. So this stint of my entrepreneurship is not my first time. So I, I want to encourage those of you who feel like maybe you've gotten out there and you felt like you might have launched too soon and you had to go back to work. It's okay. I've been there. Okay. So many years ago, I moved beyond my clientele. I'll put it that way. I went and got an office. I got an expensive telephone system. I got the most expensive um, website that I could. And I just thought if you build it, they will come. So I had all of these bills, but I didn't have the clients to match those bills. So I would go into an office. I didn't have a plan. I didn't really have a solid vision, anything like that. I just thought, hey, because I'm doing a business, everybody should support me. Well, it didn't work. And so I faced the failure. And if you want to say embarrassment, I was embarrassed where I had to walk away from an office where I told people, hey, I have an office and hey, I have this business and it wasn't making money because I was following my passion and not letting my profits fund my passion. OK, so I had to walk away from that. But a time came for me to get an opportunity to grow out. So, so this is what I will say to you. Grow out before you go out. And that will help you to avoid some of the failures, especially financially, that will cause a business to close its doors before its time. So after I worked from home for a season and I had more clients than I could, ima that I could manage from my home, then I went back out and got an office that, was, that I was able to keep and that would sustain me in proportion to the clients that I had. So I, my ego took a hit, but I'm back. <laughs> Went back to work for a moment, but I'm back and I have been a full time entrepreneur for the past 10 years. So you can do it again. And even in this journey, I failed several times. I failed. I've taken off. I've bitten off more than I could chew. I didn't know when to delegate quick enough. So, you know, forgive yourself. We're all going to make mistakes. Nobody is perfect. Everybody who makes it in this sphere tells you that nobody is perfect. So if you have a perfectionist spirit, 
I always say that procrastination, um, that see, here we go, right? I always say that perfectionism leads to procrastination, but excellence needs leads to execution. So focus on being excellent and you can execute. But if you want to be perfect, it'll mess you up and it'll cause you to procrastinate. Oh, I love it. I love it. Say that one more time. Say that one more time. That was good. Per <laughs> Thank you. Perfectionism leads to procrastination, but excellence leads to execution. Choose excellence. Ooh, choose excellence and execute. Look, you are a champion. Thanks for keeping going. CF Jackson is in the house. Debbie is in the house. Says you are a champion. Kendall says take that. We're going east, baby. We're going east. Don't worry. We come back. She's going to give us that S, by the way. I have not forgotten. Give us the E again. The E stands for what? Because we're going Entre east. East. Entrepreneur. Okay. The A stands for? Author. Author. The S stands for? Speaker. Speaker. Then we come back. They don't want to miss this, right? Because we come back. We're going to be getting to the most important part, and that is the T. They're all important, but we're going east, baby. We're going east, and you're going with us. This is your time. This is your year. Today is your January 1st. Someone write that right below the video. Today is my January 1st. You're going to get started. We'll be back in just a moment. Let's go over to Rob Howes. He says, be present where you are. We'll be back in just a moment. Hey guys, All right. me and Daddy are here. All right, I, um, I'm doing a video. I got a question. No, it's not a question. This is a video where I'm telling people something. I'm telling them that this today is their January 1st. Today is your January 1st, Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe, because today is the only day you got. Because tomorrow's not promised and yesterday is gone. So the reason why today being your January 1st is significant because it keeps you from procrastination. Procrastination is the destroyer of dreams. Yeah, it's the destroyer. It's the killer of dreams. So, take action. Be present where you're present. That's the real gift. Be present where you are present. That is the real gift. Today is your January 1st. Say, say today. Today. Say today is your January 1st. Today is January 1st. Say it loud. Today is your January 1st. That's it. Don't forget it. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome back to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late night show in the country where our mission is to help busy entrepreneurs like you to inspire, to empower, and give you the resources. And that's what Rakesha Pittman is doing this morning or this evening or this afternoon. No matter what time it is for you, she's giving you the resources necessary to execute the vision for the people you were called to serve. And we're breaking down the East formula. It is being decoded right now, real time, and I'm super excited to be here. So, Rakesha Pittman, break down that last one, the T. Talk about that, because this is your four-step winning strategy to unlock success that you need in your life and in your business. Break down that T for us, the East yes. formula. Go East with me. T is for trainer. And trainer can happen in the multiplicity of ways. People train at retreats. People train at masterminds. People train through courses. People train through workbooks, through journals. But you need to train. You need to have it. It might be a membership club that you have, but you need this. So that as an entrepreneur, when you are an author, you have your books, you are a speaker, you're speaking from the platform, and then you want that conversation to continue. You want to be able not to just give people inspiration, right? But you want to give them impartation. <laughs> you want to have some infiltration and make sure that it gets down on the inside of them. So you should develop some type of training program to offer them. It doesn't have to be a year long program. It doesn't have to be a long term thing, but it needs to be focused. It needs to be strategic and it needs to lead people to an expected end. So T is for trainer and you can do this online. You can do this in person and you can also use your books. I do this often. I use my books as part of my training program. So it works a, a dual fold thing, right? So entrepreneur, author, speaker, trainer, how are you going to train people? I have learned that you can overwhelm them. So we have to have systems that are replicable, <laughs> actionable, and doable, and your results will dictate whether you continue with that or not. So what training systems will you put in place 
to go east. Ah, the training systems they put in place to go east. You know, for those folks that are out there listening, they're probably wondering, you're breaking down the east formula. Go east, go east, go east. The question has to be, why do you do this? Like, you can go get a job. You could do a whole lot of things with your time. Um, as we listen to you be so passionate about helping all these other authors write their book, helping these other entrepreneurs to be successful, teach them they need to speak, teach them they need to have the right trainer. Um, why does Rakesha Pittman do what she does every day? Why? You know, I love transformation. I love to tell people information, show people information, be a, 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 the demonstration of the information that it doesn't matter where you started. You know, if we live in the, the U.S., and some of you may be viewing internationally, but if you have an internet connection in this day and age, baby, you can make it. So what I love to do is show people possibilities. And I know that everybody won't go east with me, but I'm showing you a possibility. I'm showing you a way to live a life that you can see, that you can manifest, and that you can make happen. It doesn't matter. I, I came from a background that wasn't the best. But you know what? Information and technology has leveled some of the playing fields. We all have our challenges. We all have our stories. We all have reasons that we can give up, but I like to see the light bulb in people's eyes. I like to see that when I'm teaching and training, which is my core talent, by the way, I turn talents into treasure. I like to see that people are able to do it and make a success in their own realm and sphere of influence. So my goal is not to make you a clone of me, they call me the midwife because my goal is to see what is on the inside of you and help you push it out and help you bring it out so that you can now raise up your legacy to be exactly what it is that you see for it to be. Now, you can't just drop the word midwife on one sentence. I think we can just stop right there, by the way. That's not fair. That's not even fair right now. So you got to give us the backstory on this whole midwife because you help people push out the possibilities, push out their dreams and how true that's something you do. So tell us the, the backstory of the midwife. Absolutely. I have been training authors for years. So I am the midwife to over 500 authors worldwide. It's an affectionate term that my author students gave me because there are so many steps in the publishing process that I describe in birthing terms. I say it's an idea that you conceive and it's on the inside of you and it grows. And then when we see our book covers, that's like an ultrasound. You get a preview before the physical book happens. And I talk about the pain that you go through having to carry this on the inside of you and it has your DNA and it has your voice and it has your personality and it sounds like you. So my students said, oh, Rikisha, you're our midwife. You're like our midwife. So they started calling me midwife. And so it is a, definitely a term of affection that I wear proudly. And I not only do it for authors, but I do it for emerging and established entrepreneurs as well through the East formula. I love it. I love it. You know, who's who do you work with? I mean, who's who's the ideal client for you? I know this is not a plug. I get it. But um, there are folks out there that are listening to you and they might be wondering, hey, I don't know even what I want to write. And she told me I need to know the story I'm going to have. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. She said I need a signature presentation. And so I'm hearing all this stuff. But, you know, who is the ideal type of client that your organization works with? And if they're out there right now, they can reach out to you and contact you, but but kind of kind of frame the conversation. And if it's not them, they might know someone who is a good fit for your organization. Ideally, I love to work with entrepreneurs and executives because they're focused, they're ready to work and I can help them develop quickly. Ideally, I have been privileged to work with everybody people of all backgrounds and in every type of nation that you could probably think of. However, I kind of get a little fire in me when I work with entrepreneurs and executives because they're usually clear, which means that I can get a faster result, you know, for them than someone that I have to labor, no pun intended, <laughs> with a little bit longer to get it done. I love that. I love that. Uh, tell them how they can contact you. Don't worry. We come back. 
the best yet to come. I've got, we've, we've got, I mean, we've got, a, a, I can't say what's going to come up in just a moment. But first, tell them how they can contact us, and then we'll come back. And I want you to break down. We're going to give you guys the double bonus gift. I know y'all didn't know this was coming because I didn't know it was coming. But it's happening in just a moment. So stay tuned. But tell us, how can they contact you? Two ways. Number one, you can text Go East to 33222. Go East to 33222. Or you can go visit me at the East formula.com. I'm also readily available on social media at Rikisha, R-E-K-E-S-H-A, Pittman, Pittman. with two T's. <laughs> Give them the number to text again. Someone, someone write the number down for if you can, for those folks that are listening right below. Text the word go east. I guess, is that all one word or two words? Yes, one word. One word. And what's the number to text the word go east to? Three, three, two, Two two. Ah, three three two two two. You've got it. You're here with the one and only, the person, the founder of the East Formula, and it's being decoded right now. And the whole message is go east. Go east. Go east. You can turn your what? Talents into treasure. Someone do me a favor right below the video. We come back. I'm gonna ask her about that. I'm gonna ask her how that really break that thing down. But look right below the video and say, turn your what? Talents into treasure turn your talents into treasure if you're ready to be paid more for what you know than you can do look right below the video and say turn my talents into treasure if you're ready to have more meaning in the world and make more money look right below the video and put turn my talents into treasure if you're ready to have more impact and make some income look right below the video and say do what turn my what Rakesha? talents into treasure and if you're ready to make a dollar and a difference someone holler a dollar and a difference at the same time <laughs> look right below the video and what should they write what should they write go east go east oh! <laughs> Okay, okay. See this? She's got to be disruptive. She's got to be disruptive. That was not the line. <laughs> Turn my talents into treasures. Turn, Turn my your talents into treasure and go east at the same time. <laughs> I love it. Go east. Go east. So the word of the day is go east. Whatever you do, go where? East. east. Go east. We'll be right back. We're going to go over to Dorsey Hill. Now, you have Rakesha Pittman with two T's over in Dallas, Texas. Now we're going over to Dorsey Hill. Dorsey Hill's over in Houston, Texas. And when we come back, we're going to talk about turning your talents into treasures. Look right below the video. Look right below the video because this is your time. We'll be back in just a moment. Take it away, Dorsey. Hello. Hi. Howdy, guys. I'm so excited to be back. It's your girl, Dorsey Hill, the founder of the Healthy, Happy, Fun Life Network. And I'm back in the Happy Entrepreneur Tribe with another thought of the week. Before we get started, you know what's coming. Why? Because it's our January 1. Our January 1. Our January, January, January 1. It's so exciting that you get to start over every single day. I love that. Okay, so what do I want to talk about this week? I have a question for you. Do you know what you really want? Hmm? Have you ever seriously sat down and wrote a list about what you absolutely want in this life and in this business that you're creating here? Because I'm willing to bet that you probably haven't put a whole lot of time or thought into what you really truly want. It's what you have to do, what you should be doing instead of things that you want out of your life. So I encourage you this week to make a list of things that you really want. What do you want your life to look like? Do you want to be healthy? Do you want to be happier? Do you want to have a lot more fun? Do you need a spiritual practice? Whatever it is, and I'm willing to bet a lot of you are probably going to have a hard time with this because you haven't sat down and really made a list of what you want in this life because it's hard sometimes to see down the road and visualize those great things that we see happen for other people actually happening for us. It can happen. You deserve for it to happen. It is there for you. You just have to want it and you have to ask for it and put it down. And my wish as always for each and every one of you is that you're happy, you're healthy, and you have a ton of fun in this life and business that you're creating. My biggest Texas love and hugs to each and every one of you. Bye-bye for now. Mwah.
See you later. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown and welcome back to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country where we inspire, we empower, and we provide the resources so busy entrepreneurs just like you can execute the vision for the people you were called to serve. And we're super excited because we have none other than Rakesha Williams on the other side, by the way, and she's a rock star. She's the founder of this whole movement out there called Go East. Go East. And it stands for entrepreneur, author, speaker, and trainer. That's the acronym. But she says at the end of the day, you can turn your talents into treasures. I want you to speak for a moment to those folks out there um, that are dualpreneurs. And they're like, wow, she's asked me to do a whole lot. And so what was her strategy? What was her strategy in order to be able to balance work and try and being happy and having a life at the same time talk about that because they want to turn their treasures their talents into treasures but there's this balancing act can you talk about how you were able to do that and maybe a suggestion you have for them as well yes use your workplace as an educational opportunity for how to operate your business don't be frustrated it's a classroom. You can enter a corporate classroom and emerge a CEO. So I want you to be encouraged. Every single work experience I've had was training for my entrepreneurial journey. So instead of being frustrated, I know that it might be tough and I know that you might want freedom because believe me, it's not that you work less hours, okay? <laughs> but I know that you want your freedom. So you can plan for that, but I want you to kind of reposition your thought process when you go into the workplace and look at what systems do they use, what phone systems do they use, what software systems do they use, and you might be able to start to gather a wish list for what you want to have when you grow into your area of entrepreneurship or find something comparable, okay? And remember, give yourself a plan. You may want to do it on the side before you take the big leap and go out there, but you can allow the corporate experience to lead you to your CEO path. So be encouraged. Also, take any take advantage of any educational opportunities that they are offering you. If you have any type of educational allowance, take advantage of it and train yourself. Take the type of courses in the education that you will need when you get out there. And so you might not need a degree, and you don't, to be an entrepreneur. And we know the famous stories of several people who do not have them, but you do need information. And you do need education. So go ahead and consider that your classroom. And then when you leave, you'll leave thanking them for funding your future. Ah, thank them for funding your future. And you've been an entrepreneur now for 10 years. Um, and so congratulations to you. Thank what do you say to the person that's been in the game or been an entrepreneur for two, three, two years, five years, 10 years or more? And they know there's another level. You know, successful people all have one common belief. You know what that one common belief is? The belief they can always get better. Mm -hmm. And so my question to you is, what do you say to the entrepreneur that's out there that feels like they're in a rut, feels like they're stuck? What do you suggest to them to get to that next level? What are some steps they can do right now? Well, I definitely say go east. There, I think that if you have a machine or a wheel that keeps turning, it's fresh. The reason why I publish every year is to keep my thought leadership at the forefront to keep me fresh on the speaking circuit, to make sure that every time I go to the news station or I'm interviewed or I go to the radio station or, or people want to write an article about me that I have something current that is going on. I think sometimes we get stuck in what we've done and not how we want to evolve in our business. Maybe you need to give yourself a promotion. You know, maybe you've kept yourself in the same job title and the same functions for too long. And that's why you're in a rut. So that means that as you grow, it is great to bring other people on. Give them the opportunity to take on some of that work. Virtual assistants are popular now. If you cannot afford an employee, it is OK. But allow yourself the room to grow and to get into some other um, job assignment so that you can do this. Why don't you have a book if your book is not out yet? Why aren't you speaking more often if you desire to do so? Have you buried yourself in work and limited yourself from these opportunities that you really desire because you think that you're the only person who can do it? You're not alone. You are not alone. I love what you're saying. I love this concept. 
And what do you say to the other folks that are struggling with collaborating right now? You know, sometimes a lot of things you've said, it sounds like it comes down to collaboration, right? Um, me working with someone else, me giving a little bit over here, me taking a little bit over here. Talk about being able to collaborate and how should you look for good collaboration partners because you said something very important, and that is success is a team sport. So my mm -hmm. question is, how does someone identify a good collaboration partner, and when do you know that you've given too much? Um, talk about that for a moment. Oh, I think that sometimes we mismatch ourselves, and we look for partners, and we're not even in the same puzzle box. You know, mm -hmm. so if it's not in your area, I, I, I love the stories of people who they trained for the Olympics and maybe the coach that you needed wasn't in your town. So you had to relocate. Relocation sometimes is an option. And if you're not ready to relocate, you can travel and you can go to conferences. I have met some of the most amazing partners, business partners, collaborators, getting outside of my comfort zone leave your home, leave your office. You can leave that work for a weekend and go. I know you have the closed conference coming up, by the way, and go to places where you can meet people that match the pieces in your puzzle box that solve the big picture that you see. So one, you, you definitely need to know clearly what it is that you're trying to do, because if you're confused, then it's hard to help a confused person construct anything. Right. right. But two, Get out there and, and see, are there other options for you that you have not considered? And it, when you talk to other entrepreneurs, you find out what methods, what systems that they're using. Often you get to meet their friends and their circle. Don't take advantage of it. But you may find that your partner may not be next door, but they may be the next flight away. I love it, which is how we were able to meet. Thanks to Jennifer <laughs> Harris. Shout out to Jennifer Harris. We were able to meet at a conference. And look, is this where the magic happens? The word of the day is go east. The word of the day is go east. The word of the day is what? Go, go east. east. Everyone look right below the video. Look right below the video and write the word go east. Is it hashtag? Hashtag go east. Hashtag, is that right? Yes. Oh, hashtag go east. Okay, I just made that up and she said it's right. All right, it just makes sense. <laughs> hashtag go east. Uh, Leanne Johnson's out there saying make sure you go to text go east. You can do that. Text go east to 3322. Thanks a lot. Stacy Lloyd, thanks for all your notes. Lawrence Hood is in the house. Gene Marvel Jr., what's up, my man? It's been a while. He's in the house. Kendra right? he's working hard. He's working hard. He is working hard. He says you are not alone. Go east. Go east. Go east. We come back. We're going to do rapid fire. And we're going to ask some questions that not – so much question, but you can get some answers on not so much why she does what she does, but the step by step formula. And she's given one already and she gave a second one and she gave a third one. She gave a fourth one. But don't worry. The best is yet to come. Why? Because she's someone that refuses to give up. We go all the way up to New York, New York. So nice. They named it twice and connect with none other than Delano A. Johnson. He talks about refuse to live talented and broke. Let me say that again. I refuse to live talented and broke. As you hear those words out there, you think, you know what, Shay? I, I, that's you, refuse to live talented and broke. Look right below the video. Look right below the video and write those words. I refuse to live talented and broke. Because I love what Ricardo said. He said, hashtag, go east. I love what Edith Hall said. East is east. Hashtag, go east. Deedon Bowden said, go east. Kendra said, you're just a flight away. I refuse to live talented and broke. We'll be right back. I refuse to live talented and broke. We'll be right back. <laughs> Take it away, Delano. I live in a city where there are more creative people per square mile than any other place on the planet. Question is, how many of them are successful? How many are just like I was? Talented and broke. Being broke is more than just not having money. It's failure to turn opportunities into profitable businesses and relationships that last. <laughs> My mother always said, people perish for lack of knowledge. A compass takes you in the direction of your destiny. The knowledge of obstacles and distractions will ensure you arrive safely. My mentor once said to me, if I had half your talent, 
I'd have four times my wealth. Since then, I made a promise to God. If he would help me unlock my earning potential, I would pay it forward and help others do the same. That's why I wrote this book. Because God made us too talented to live our lives broke. And that includes you. I refuse to live talented and broke. How true is that? I refuse to live talented and broke. I see you, Stacey Lloyd. I refuse to live talented and broke. I see you, Cheryl Diane. I refuse to live talented and broke. That's why you need to go east. That's why you need to go east. That's why you need to go east so you can turn your talent into treasure. See, you can refuse to live talented and broke, but you can turn your talent into two treasures how important is that that is so true we're going to a segment right now called rapid fire and rapid fire is when we get to ask any question and she gets the answer so she'll take a minute or two and answer the question and so um i guess the first question comes up is when you keep using the word success over and over and over again i love it in your writings what does success mean to you from an entrepreneur perspective right now what does success mean to you reaching a goal success is not always money it, it's it's easily definable. People see money and they say, oh, you were a success. Well, uh, you know, but success is setting a specific goal and reaching that. that. That's as simple as it is. Money may be one of your goals. You know, launching a book may be one of your goals. Mm -hmm. Did you get it done? And if you got it done well or exceeded what you uh, had set out to do, that's a success, baby. Wow. I, I love it. What's the best advice you've ever been given? Oh my gosh. The best advice I've ever been given was do what makes you money from a business standpoint. I had to, you know, I learned the hard way that just because I like something, it did, didn't mean that the marketplace wanted it. And I think that a lot of us get stuck there and we get frustrated there. So I have an amazing business mentor, Dr. Flora Brown. Fantastic. And she challenged some of my practices. Uh, in terms of t-shirts, I was selling t-shirts at one point and one t-shirt sold and the other t-shirt wouldn't move. And she said, Rakesha, do what makes you money. Do what makes you money. So I stopped investing my time in things that were throwing away my money and wasting my money. And I really, really honed on those things that would bring me freedom. And that may come in the form of money. That may come in the form of more time. But I had to do things that were profitable so that I could have more options as an entrepreneur. I love it. I love it. That's, that's very, very important. And, and what's the secret to being a happy entrepreneur? I know there's, there's a lot out there, but what's your secret to being a happy entrepreneur? With that big smile on your face. Let's give it up for her. She's out there smiling to what? The one and only. And as she's thinking about that question, do me a favor. Let's give Rakesha Pittman, Rakesha Pittman, a digital applause, a digital applause. And how do we give her a digital applause? How do we do that? You look right below the video because she didn't ask for a cash out payment before we got started. She didn't <laughs> ask me to send her a Zelly payment. She said she came to serve. So look right below the video. Look right below the video. And I want you to write these words. Thank you, Rakesha Pittman. Just put thank you at Rakesha Pittman. I put great job, Rakesha Pittman. I put we appreciate you. Rakesha Pittman. It's your way of saying thank you. See, one of the things she can do is Rakesha Pittman can always make more money. I promise you that. But she can never make more time. And yeah. this morning, this afternoon, wherever you are in the world, she's given the most <coughs> valuable piece, which is her time. So look right below the video and say, you look good. So you're doing fantastic. She's probably wondering, do I look okay? Do I sound okay? Well, we're going to help her out. You're going to give a digital applause. So look right below the video and do that. And as she's doing that, what's up, Donna Hicks? Is there, it is always a pleasure. Stacey Lloyd says, thank you so much. She sees you out there. What is it? What's the secret to being a happy entrepreneur? Talk to me. As fast as you can offload what you hate. I know when you're starting out, if you're a solopreneur, you may have to do it all, including some grunt work. But as quickly as you can, learn how to live in where you operate the best. I do say I am Rakesha Pittman and I am turning talents into treasure. There are some core talents that I have that only I can do the way that I can do it. But once I reach a certain point, I do need to offload those things that frankly wear me out. 
So as soon as you can, release that and live in your happiness zone. When I stand on a stage, there is a high that I get that I cannot explain. When I teach sessions, there is this energy that I feel that cannot be explained. That is my happy place. So if I'm teaching and training, which is my core talent, I am a happy entrepreneur. But if I'm doing work that I can offload, I'm unhappy. (laughs) (laughs) That's well said. Very, very well said, by the way. Thanks. Very, very well said. I want you to know that Stacey Lewis said, thank you, Rakesha Pittman. Dale Sharma Jones Moore. Okay, it's a mouthful. It says, thank you, Rakesha Pittman. She appreciates you. Kendra Wright says, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Kalila says, thank you, Queen. So me. D Bolden says, thank you, Rakesha Pittman. Great job. Cheryl Diane is out there right now. Says, Rakesha, you're a rock star. Love your passion and forthrightfulness. I appreciate you. Donna Hicks says, hello. What's up, Donna? She's out there making it happen. Unstoppable black woman in the house. Lisa Ann Johnson says, thank you so much. Debbie Malone says, thank you. Edith says, you are excellent. Go East. <laughs> the word of the day is go East. Nicole Brown Hurston said, the Midwest went East tonight. How true is that? <laughs> great job. Great job. I love it. Um, next question I have is, um, what do you say to the person that has experienced some failure and has some regret? And I know sometimes uh, people have ways to handle it. So it's a two-part question. One, how do you handle a setback? And number two, what do you say to the person that just recently had a setback in business? Like, ah, you know what? I've been down that road before. Maybe I'm going to go a little slower now. Mm -hmm. I've learned to forgive myself. That perfectionist thing will kill you if you let it. Please forgive yourself. I know it's easy to live in a world where everyone feels comfortable tearing you down behind a keyboard. But those are people who do not love themselves and definitely who have not discovered their core talent. And here's an encouragement that I want to give you. Often your answer is in adversity. I know. I hate it. I adversity. Oh, but we all have to go through it. But adversity made me a beast in business. So find your answer in adversity. Just because you're going through it doesn't mean that you will not get to it. Okay. There are other people who have failed well. Okay. (laughs) And they succeeded. I do not. I always say this. There's some testimonies that I don't want, (laughs) but One of the common things you'll see with a lot of entrepreneurs who have made a lot of money is either they've had a bankruptcy or homelessness or some type of failure, some type of catastrophic event that they went through. But guess what? Because they were clear about the journey that they wanted and where they wanted to be, they found an answer in the adversity and they kept going, you are resilient, you are strong, you are an innovator. The thing that I love about author, one definition means the creator or the generator of something. You can create a new scenario for you. Your old way might be gone and it's okay. There's a new path, there's a new direction for you to go on. So continue to have hope and know that all of this is going to change so continue to flex with the changes baby i love it i love it so well so well said by the way i get so inspired i get so encouraged when you're talking by the way so inspired and so encouraged um a couple questions then we'll get to the other good stuff um how does rikisha Pittman want to be remembered when she's gone oh gosh you know i tell this story and it it means something to me I have a seven year old daughter and I taught her to read fluently by the age of two. She has proclaimed that she wants to be an author. So my plan is not just to leave her money, property, to all the things that I could put together for her. But most importantly, I want her identity to be found on a bookshelf full of books by me. That is so my legacy is important that she does not have to go take a DNA test to figure out who she is. All she'll have to do is go pull a book off of the shelf written by her mother and she will know what type of legacy she came from and know that she can supersede me. That is important. So I say this, it might be morbid, but I tell people like when you bury me, don't put a gravestone over me, put a bookshelf on me, baby. So well said. So well said. Disruptive, disruptive, disrupted. I love it, by the way. I love it. You know, Samuel Nixon Jr. is watching. So, okay, we'll flex with the changes. He's out there right now. He's listening. Certainly appreciate that. Stacey Lewis says, yes, learn to forgive yourself 
words of wisdom. Donna is out there. Donna Hicks is it says, thank you so much for Keisha Pittman as you are rocking out right now. Uh, the final question, and then we'll let you have final thoughts in a moment, but is um, you mentioned your daughter, mm -hmm. Lennon. And um, imagine she gets a hold, she's seven years old, but she gets a hold of this long lost audio file or video file and she's watching it. And the question's asked, what words do you want to give to Lennon right now? What recommendation, what suggestion, what are your words and encouragement to your seven year old daughter who one day will see this many years from now? What do you want to say to her? Never, ever, ever be stopped by your brilliance and your excellence. You know, I, I think that people always want to concentrate on the positives, but guess what? I was tortured and tormented because I was good with language, because I was smart in school. Don't dumb yourself down for anybody. Shine, shine if it makes people uncomfortable. Speak up if it makes people uncomfortable. Be a trailblazer and be brave enough to change the world. So well said. Thank you so much. We come back. We're going to have Rakesha Pittman give her final thoughts. Um, you don't want to miss that. That's one of my favorite segments because she gets the opportunity to speak words, speak life, speak encouragement to those folks that when these lights go off, you got to have your January one moment. You've got to get started. You've got to make it happen. So we'll do that. When we come back. Final thoughts from the one and only, the lovely, the beautiful, the bold, the brilliant, a person that's a kind human being, none other than who? Rakesha Pittman. We'll be back in just a moment. We're going to go over none of the shape round. <laughs> Start slow, finish strong. We'll be back <laughs> in just a second. It's a great day. My name is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur and the host of the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country, the happy entrepreneur show. And you know, I'm here on the baseball field, kind of like when life started. And I remember when I was just a little boy, I used to go to the baseball field. And I used to always want to play the game. Like I always wanted to be the pitcher, right? I always imagine myself coming up on the pitcher mound, getting the signals for home plate, reaching back, taking that ball and tossing it all the way to home plate. But here's the problem. The pitcher has to understand what's going on in the game. And then the catcher has to call the rules. And for whatever reason, I was never gifted enough to be the pitcher or the catcher. In fact, I wasn't even gifted enough to be on the team. <laughs> but here's my point to you. And here's why I tell you that story. It doesn't matter where you start. It only matters where you finish. Think about the Washington Nationals, the World Series Championships, champions of this year, right? They start off 19 wins, 31 losses. I'm going to say it again. 19 wins, 31 losses. Now, anyone that starts off 19 and 31, you have to think for a moment. You got to think for a moment. They're not going to win the World Series. Just like in life, you might not have started off with a silver spoon in your mouth. You might not have started off with a large bank account. You might have had to work and claw your way to where you are. Isn't that how life is? Isn't that exactly how the Washington Nationals were? No, okay, think about how this relates to your life. The Washington Nationals, to get into the playoffs, but they had to play an elimination game just to stay in the playoffs. Your life might be like that. Maybe your, your car has been repossessed. I've been there. Um, maybe you, you, you've had your lights cut off. I've been there. And so you had to overcome that, just like the Washington Nationals. And then you went on, and then you had to play a series of tough games. Sometimes life hands you a lemon, and you have to make lemonade. How does this relate to you? It doesn't matter where you start. It only matters where you finish. So what I want to share with you right now is in your life, I want you to go ahead right now and start right now. I want you to go ahead and start that weight loss program. Get to the gym. Get the exercise. Your health really matters. I want you right now to go ahead and start making sure you take time for yourself in your business. Start that marketing plan. Yes, yeah, I'm going to do it. Start that automation program. Yes, yeah, I'm going to do it. Or just take time with the one you love the most. There's still plenty of time as long as you woke up, just like the Nationals, you got a shot. Why, Shay? Because it doesn't matter where you start. It only matters where you finish. With that being said, I know you're a winner. I know you're a champion. I know you're going to get started, and you're going to finish as a champion because that's what champions do, just like the Washington Nationals. With that being said, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. We'll make some good things, how we connect again next time. It doesn't matter where you start. It only matters where you finish. Talk to you.
Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. And the deed, it doesn't matter where you start. It only matters where you finish. And we've had a great conversation. We've had to sit back with the one and only and speak to none other than Vakisha Pittman, who talked about Go East. She did the Decode formula on that. And we certainly appreciate that. She gave her ideas. And I'm going to encourage her, encourage you to connect with her. So I'm going to ask her when she gives her final thoughts. Once again, to talk about first how they can connect with you and then share your final thoughts. But I do want to say thank you on behalf of the Happy Entrepreneur Tribe. We appreciate you. We love you. We embrace you. We've got to have you back on the show. I mean, you are just a rock star, but you're also a kind human being. So thanks a lot. With that being said, I turn it over to you to have your, your final thoughts. And thank you again, Shay, for what you do. You support so many entrepreneurs and give them uh, an opportunity to share and grow other happy entrepreneurs. So shout out to the happy entrepreneur tribe. Listen, you do not have to have it all figured out. Do not say that you do not have it. Instead, ask, how can you get it? Whenever I want to fund a business, a book, a training system, whatever it is, when I'm going east, right? I don't go to the bank. I go to the treasury. We talked about turning talents into treasure. I want to encourage you. So many times we get caught up on, you know, the saying of the moment and we want to tell people things like find your purpose. Some people are still messed up because you don't know what your purpose is. I encourage you to figure out your core talent. What is that thing that every time you go somewhere, people ask you for it? Every job you have, people ask you for it. You can't get away from it. It keeps coming up over and over again. That could be your core talent. So when I need to finance something, I don't go looking out. I say, what's on the inside of me that I can turn into a treasure that will fund the dream that I have? Don't look at price points and be scared. All you have to do is look on the inside and say, what do I have within me that can generate what? I need turn your talents into treasure decide that you're going to be an entrepreneur because the freedom of it is amazing when you're an author once you become an author you can never become unauthorized and it leaves a legacy in the earth as a speaker you have the opportunity to reach and impact people and transform them with your words and as a trainer you have the opportunity to instill knowledge skills and information in people that allow them to turn their own talents into treasure. You can reach me at theeastformula.com. Text go east to 33222 for a special surprise from me, right? And of course, you can find me on social media at Rakesha Pittman. That's R E K E S H A Pittman with two T's. Go east with me. Let me go east, go east, go east. With that being said, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank every single one of you out there. Make sure you connect with us over at Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe. If you haven't, text the word revenue, text the word revenue to 202 202- 999-3515. Make, make sure you get the notes. Make sure you stay connected. With that being said, I want you to know that you're amazing. I want you to know that you're incredible. I want you to know that God's blessed you with so many gifts. You've got so much greatness inside you, and that greatness is going to be bubbling up. And I know for you that the best is yet to come. I know for you the best is yet to come. In fact, I believe the best is yet to come. Someone look right below the video. Look right below the video and just write those words. The best is yet to come. Hashtag today is my January 1st. Just look right below the video. Look right below the video and just write these words. The best, that's right, the best is yet to come. Hashtag today is my January 1st. With that being said, by the way, my name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you, I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we're going to make some good things happen. We connect again next time. God bless and I wish you success. Thanks Thanks. a lot, Rakesha Williams. It's been real. It's Thank you for fun. having me. <laughs> it was great. Please go ahead and give a big standing check ovation check, 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 for check. the one and the only Shay Brown. And I'm here right now in this moment with none other than the one and only Dr. Willie Jolly. What's up, my friend? It's a privilege and a pleasure and a treat and a treasure to be in your presence. All right, Delator, we're going to get started. You ready, Delator? I'm ready, friend. I'm you ready, ready, Dr. Kinnett? Ready, ready. Got, no, none other than Andy Harikas and... 
And we have someone like a Dr. Sonia, who's a bad sister. All right, now, go ahead with your bad self. None other than the Kim Warren Martin. promise I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, check. Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, we no matter what. Man. Got money on my mind, Man. I can never Man. get enough. And every time I step Man. up in the field, yes. everybody yes. hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there.